we're going to take a look here at um, an output on our right side and then a couple hints about how this program runs. Um, so this is that volcano question. Uh, the mountain looks suspicious. The top changes color the more it is clicked. Okay, let's see. So we click on this. There we go. I got a little bit of change in color, a little more change in color, a little more, a little more. Uh, I don't know if anything changed there. I did click it again. Ah, okay. And then I'm going to keep clicking. It doesn't look like anything's happening, so I'm going to reset this. Let's do through it again. One, two, three, four, five, six on the sixth one. Okay, that's good to know. Um, click to see the lava color darken. We did that. And then notice how the volcano explodes after the lava becomes bright red. Okay, good to know. Those are some hints on to how the output works. So next, after reading that, I'm going to go into start coding. And usually these programs give me some instructions. So let's go up to the very top, actually, and see. So we got a background. Um, if I use my inspector tool by holding control, I can... Take a look at my background there you go background is sky blue uh, it's got rb uh, rgb values and it's set at the coordinate zero zero which is pretty much what i got here um app volcano has erupted interesting it has a specific boolean and it's set to false that might come in handy and then give us some comments here's the volcano so here are the functions of shapes that deal with our volcano themselves so there's some lava there's lava.green. This looks like a custom property here. This is a variable they've created. Uh, they call it lava.green. There is no specific argument called green in lava. They've custom made one. This might be important later on. And then the rock itself is a very complex polygon. Hopefully we don't have to do anything with that. And then lava explosion, they've named it burst. So they've given this polygon um, the name burst, uh, just like our other one was called rock and our lava over there. Um, Okay, and then underneath, it looks like they've made actually a custom function. They've defined it and they've called it draw spill. It takes no arguments. Um, just when it's called, it looks like it's gonna print out a bunch of stuff. So let's see if we can make sense of what that is. Well, we'll go and click. So we'll see as we're clicking this lava oval. So this oval here that represents the lava, it looks like it's changing. I'm gonna hit control here. Look at that, it uh, gives us some RGB values, border width, okay. I click again. Ah, it drops again. I'm going to keep holding control. Ah, it looks like that RGB value, the G in it, which is the middle term of that argument, keeps going down. It's at zero. Oh, and then we get this. Everything changes when we do that. Okay, let's bring it back one more time. That's interesting to us. If I take a look, so notice I got to kind of hover over this part. Otherwise, I'm just looking at the polygon there. So to look at the Oval, which is what this function tells us, lava is called the oval. Looks like that's the center of the oval and they have a polygon that kind of goes in front of it there. Um, we have RGB value. So I'm gonna click again. Notice it starts at 200, 160. So that green value is the only thing that's really changing for us here. And then we get a big change. Okay, good. Let's scroll down and on definition on mouse press. So obviously I'm interacting with this. Um, my input is when my mouse, uh, my mouse is pressed. They've given us a heck of a lot of hints here. So I'm actually gonna read through this carefully because this is a tricky one. Um, use RGB values and provide a custom property to change the fill of lava. Now you might think this is another sentence, but just the way they do commenting in this Python program, it's just a continuation of that sentence. So use RGB values, provide a custom property to change the fill of the lava at the top of the volcano so that it appears more red. Don't let any values in the RGB become negative. Well, that's gonna be important to us, okay? So use RGB values and provide a custom property. I'm gonna go back up. If we notice in our lava, which is that oval, when I hit control, the R, the green of the RGB value, we notice it, it's decreasing. It gets down to zero, and on my next one, next one, it completely changes. Um, the RGB value actually becomes uh, 255 in zero. So we get a nice little change there in that. It's still the same object, I believe. Yeah. Um, and then this is that custom property they talk about, lava.green, which means, if you recall, here's our fill, and that's a function within the oval function. So you're taking your grade 11 math there, functions within functions. Um, this is the green value to start. If you remember, it's 200. And then when we click, it's changing. It goes down to 160. Now, obviously, it starts at 200. It doesn't change in our code here, but something in their code is changing, that green value. So maybe, let's see. 25500. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to click it again. 
a lot of stuff happened, but I think for the most part, it stayed the same. Now we get some other things where our background changes and it looks like these polygons show up. So those become part of it. And in fact, we got, it looks like two things going on here, the polygon and we have our oval in the background. Um, so a lot of inspection before I've written any code. I have to do quite a bit of inspecting here. Now it looks like we want something to change if something is pressed, which is our concept of a conditional. So let's say, let me start with maybe an if statement. And if we need the RGB value, and we probably want that to change. And then depending on what that oval value is, put our control, where's my control? There we go. Depending on what that green value is, we probably want it to drop. So our green value is currently 200. We could say something like if, um, how do I anticipate it? So here's my other trick. As I sit here and I go, hmm, uh, I got this value, lava green, but like right now it's just 200. I don't have a way of impacting this little piece here. I could potentially try to give it a value. I could give it a variable value and then assign it a number here. And then when the condition goes on, so we could maybe replace this with lava green if we want. So let's go about trying that to start. Let's say lava dot green. So let's go in there and then we're going to run. And when I run it on my end, oh, my if statement down here, let's comment that out so it doesn't become a disaster. Okay, we commented that out. We'll run it. Ah, look at this. Uh, name lava is not defined. So we got this lava.green. So my problem here is I call it here, but I define it down here. So I mean, I could just move it around where it is. My program, run it. Lava is not defined. It really doesn't like my lava green here um, is equal to 200. So I guess it's upset about this piece here. So let's get rid of it. Let's go back to what we had. We'll put it back to the 200. There's another way we could try manipulating this. Let's actually jump back down. I'm going to uncomment my if statement. And maybe what I'm going to do instead is we have that fill, right? If you recall, this is the fill to lava. That's the argument here. We're going to impact the lava fill. Okay, so maybe instead of saying, oh, I got rid of my lava green actually. Green and assign it the value of 200. Okay, what if we then say lava.fill? So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm manipulating the fill here. Okay, so I'm going to assign the fill a different RGB value. We're going to say RGB and we'll start it at 255 because that is our red, R being the first one. And then here I'm going to say maybe lava dot green to see if it allows us to do it that way. And our blue still stays as zero. So we run some of our code. Oh, I'm missing my colon again. I'll comment this out. I keep doing that. Okay, I get no errors. The program lets me take this. This is nice. So what I've now done is I've replaced this value here of 200 with a variable that I can now call and manipulate. Okay, so now what I want to do is I got that lava fill. We have this as lava green. So maybe we want this to continuously change when we do stuff. So like we said, we're going to go back to that conditional. If what? What, what are we changing on? I, I'm not quite sure what I want to change on yet. Um, maybe we're going to say, um, I don't quite know what we're going to do with it yet. And I don't want to quite give it away either. Whoops. Ah, let's go back. There we go. Put a little colon. We know we have that lava green. I probably want to do something with it. I'm going to uh, maybe assign it some value. I don't know. Let's put it down to 50 if something happens. And then uh, we'll say if lava, maybe we'll manipulate it from lava green. If lava green is um, greater than 150. Okay, we want lava green to equal 50. Sure, that's one thing we can do. Let's try running it. We click. Hmm, lava green equals 50. Doesn't look like anything happens when we do that. I get no change in my code. Um, and now that's maybe because I'm not getting my lava green to change. So here's another thing we could potentially try. Why don't, and I've just, oh, I assigned it the value of, if lava green is greater than 150, assign it the value of 50. So it starts off. Run. Nothing happens on our mouth press. Okay, let's try another idea here. 
Let's say if lava green, let's go much lower. Let's say if it's greater than zero. And maybe we just want it to decrease. So there's a couple ways we can do this. We can say, um, take on the old lava green, spell it right, green value, and subtract something. Well, let's say we subtract 50 from it. I'm going to run this program. I still get nothing changing in my program. So what I want to do is I want to make sure my lava fill is going to update. So what I'm going to do is the same thing I had written above. I'm going to RGB 255. And I'm going to say lava.green. Ah, yes, this makes sense now. Let's see if this gives us any bit of a change here. Oh, I got a change. Okay, let's go to control. Where am I at? Zero. Just keeps dropping down. Oh, and I said it's because it's greater than zero, right? And I could have said something like at 100. I might have to play around with this value. Let's see. I hit control, go on my oval. Ah, there at 100, it stops. So I do got to figure that piece out. I'm going to do some math to do that. Why wasn't this calling before? Well, what was happening is we were reassigning Lava Green, but Lava Green really only got called one time. All right, our Lava Fill. So what we're saying here is we're updating that information and then we are calling it again. We want it to now update so that this piece changes. So we called it and we got what we wanted to change, which is great. We have that piece. Let's go down to the next part. We've got some changing um, oval here. Uh, you're gonna have to play around with the numbers. Uh, maybe you don't subtract by 50. Maybe you have to divide by something. Maybe you don't want this condition to be greater than 100. Maybe you want to be greater than negative 10, something like that. We go to run. Um, lava green was never closed. There you go. Back at run. Maybe I could say it's negative 10. Hit control, drop. There we go. Oh, we run into a problem. It tells us about a range problem. Oh, so maybe the negative is a problem. So just keep that in mind when you're going to build this piece. I'm not going to give away all the little details of it, but this is probably a good code set to start with. And then let's go down to the next piece. Next one says, if there was no more green in the lava when the mouse is clicked, uh, the volcano should erupt if it hasn't already. And then there's a second piece. The volcano should only erupt once. Use uh, a, a provided app custom property Ooh, to check if it has erupted. So we go way up to the top. That's that Boolean we have here. Here's an app custom property. It's a Boolean set to false. So we probably need to use this as part of it. So we had our if statement. Well, what if we have, if we don't want it to be that, if, sorry, if once this is done, let's say we're past this part, we can use the second part. So we can use our else if, okay? And we need to use, it says that app custom property. So I probably want it to be app dot, um, I think it's volcano. Volcano has erupted, is that what it's called? Yeah. Erupted, okay. Is it equal to false? The volcano. Um, let's run. Line 49 doesn't line. Pass. Oh, yes. I need to give it something to do within there. Okay. Well, what do we want it to do? Um, well, let's go back up. If we notice in the solution after a certain amount of clicks, we get, I'll hold my control here. Boom. We get a whole bunch of other stuff. It looks like draw spill. I believe that's what's happening. It's drawing this polygon here. So if it's false, okay, once it's false, um, so if we go through all of these and we're finally out of it, the next thing we want is it probably we want it to show. So we probably need to draw spill. And remember that took no arguments. Okay. Um, and that gives us all these polygons. And then there's an explosion of lava. They call burst. It looks like another polygon. And if you notice, it's not visible to start. So I probably want mm, this function they've named burst. I probably want burst to also, what are we going to manipulate? We want to manipulate the part of it called visible. That's the argument. Go visible. Um, let's set it to true. Let's just run with those. See what we get. There's a lot of clicking. Hey, there we go. I got something happening. Now my background hasn't changed, but I definitely got my colors to change. And then once it got out of this conditional, it went to the else if, and this is currently false. Okay. But the thing is, if I click it again and again and again, I believe this is running many times. And here's a key part. They only want it to run once. 
So that conditional, or I should say the app custom property that's false, I probably want to manipulate it down here too. I probably want to change what it is so that this only occurs once, this else if statement. And then finally, it looks like this app background, when I click away, our app background here has a bunch of changes. You can see that here, uh, light slate gray, light gray. And when we start, that's not it, it's sky blue. So we probably have to manipulate this piece and we need to manipulate this piece in that else, in that else statement. So we're gonna have to write things like that down. We want the app background. I'm gonna copy, in fact, I'm gonna copy both just to give you an idea. I'm gonna copy both of them in there. This still needs to be part of that if statement. There we go. So when we run the else if, each of these lines is something the computer reads and then runs. So it draws that spill, it turns the burst to true. The app background, we probably wanna manipulate this piece. And has it erupted? False, the problem if I keep it false, every time I click away on my canvas, uh, we're not gonna run, run, there we go. Three, it's gonna keep running every single time. I might need to do some kind of change to that piece. So hopefully that gets you along your way with how to manipulate the volcano question, because this one is a relatively tricky question to deal with.